Welcome back, everyone. It is 47 past the hour. Go ahead. Have another cup of coffee. You have our permission. This week, two <laughs> days were devoted to the brew drink many people rely on throughout the day. News 3 this morning reporter Eden Sheckle joins us live this morning from the Fifth Element Coffee Shop. It's a new shop. Good morning, Eden. Good morning, Adam and Charlotte. Now, coffee is probably something a lot of us indulge in every morning. And uh, we're actually at Fifth Element today with Todd Alba and Danny Mendez. Thanks for being here, guys. Our All pleasure. Right. All right. So, what's interesting is you guys opened about three months ago. Mm -hmm. And what sets you guys apart is that your coffee is actually, you focus on getting coffee from one country. Tell us more about that. Sure. It's uh, through a rela relationship that I developed with my uh, old college buddy back at EW Richland and EW Platteville, uh, Silas Baye from El Salvador. He invited me back in 1992 to travel to the country. And, you know, I was a kid that grew up in southwest Wisconsin, and so going to Central America was a, a whole new experience. And got to go there, fell out of the country, met people in the coffee industry back in 2002, and, and realized that, hey, you could do things environmentally the right way, labor standards the right way, treat people well, pay, pay them a fair price for their work, and also get a really fantastic of coffee so I said hey I'm in you know and that was really my my adventure began that way and a little by little and and here we are and we want to show people so this you were telling me that uh, you guys focus on one roast right you provide yep. one roast so tell us what we have here and why you guys choose to offer one roast well actually I thought about offering an, an Adam Schrager birthday roast based on that <laughs> last you know I mean doesn't he look yeah. like a little Ray Romano I mean everybody there loves Adam know. you know but uh, <laughs> yes we focus on one roast it's not a birthday Adam Schrager roast but it's we call it an optimal uh. roast and uh, so a lot of places what they do is they buy a little bit of uh, uh, coffee like we have a, a high-end coffee and a lot of kind of lower-end coffee they blend it together they hire a slick marketer to put a label on it and then it's basically burnt coffee mm. uh, but what we do is we source a it's called single origin coffee it's from one lot on one farm and we bring that here Danny actually is our head roaster in El Salvador four monkeys coffee roasters is the mm -hmm. name of the roastery that my business partner uh, Alejandro Mendez is partners Pardon. with Danny uh, down in El Salvador so Danny roasts it uh, we call it an optimal roast we bring out the natural flavors of the coffee mm -hmm. because just like fine wine fine coffee has those same overtones of chocolate tobacco fruit honey and so forth so if you buy a really good coffee you have a great roaster like Danny you prepare it the right way you're gonna get those natural flavors uh, in your coffee so Danny is doing what we have uh, we call a brew bar or a pour-over uh, bar it simply means that it's a manual method instead of using a, a machine or a drip method mm -hmm. uh, like you do your mr. coffee this is people can do this at home we offer the products right here at fifth element coffee uh, on University Ab Avenue in Madison. They can buy it here. Or they better yet come on into the shop and let one of our professional baristas like uh, Danny or Franco or Mikey uh, do the work for you. So this is, Danny right now is using what we call a V60, named after the, uh, the 60 degree cone uh, in, the, uh, in the vessel right there. All and right. that brings out kind of a medium flavor. And then the uh, Chemex that we're using over here, because we aerate the coffee, uh, kind of like decanting wine, uh, it brings out a sweeter part of the coffee. Awesome, and we will check in again to see how this tastes and how it looks when he's done. We're gonna have to wrap up real quick, but we'll be back at six o'clock. Back to you guys. All right, thanks, Eden. Tell Todd I'll get him back for the Ray Romano reference. <laughs> I will. I appreciate it. Americans consumed 6.8 pounds of coffee per capita last year. Does that sound like a lot to you? It does. It does? It does sound like, does it not to you? I don't know, I just, like, I expect it to be like 100 pounds or something, because that's a lot of coffee. Oh. I don't know. Anyway, many people enjoyed two coffee holidays this week, National Coffee Day and International Coffee Day. News 3 This Morning reporter Eden Chuckle is on the caffeine beat this morning and every morning. Hi, Eden. Good morning, guys. This really is the week for coffee lovers. And I actually have the guys from Yes Coffee Roasters, Tony and Daniel. Thanks for being here today. You're welcome. All right, so we were actually talking about there's really a science that goes into roasting coffee. Tell us about the process that you guys go through to make this all happen. Sure, so coffee shows up to us in this form. It's actually green. It's the seed inside of a cherry. And so it's actually soft. It kind of smells like sweet grass, not what people really expect coffee to taste like. And then what we have to do is we bring it into our sample roaster here. This is a small, small batch roaster. It's electric. Uh, you can bring them onto origin and it's really just used to make sure that the coffee lot we're getting is what we're expecting, a high quality. And what we're doing is we're caramelizing the sugars inside the bean. So it starts to turn brown. And as the sugar is caramelized, then it starts to get that darker black flavor that people are more used to with coffee. Mm -hmm. And then it cracks, so it physically expands and breaks open. And that's the first crack, and that's where we like to drop the coffee. After that, you go into second crack, and it starts to get darker, more like the French roast, Italian roast, things that people are used to. Um, 
But this machine here is just a small version of what we use on the large scale at our actual roasting facility. Um, and <laughs> and you guys yeah. are from, so, okay, so your business is, is based in Monroe. Yes. But you guys import stuff from other places, uh, Costa Rica, and then this, this machine's from Thailand, right? Mm -hmm. So we're actually going to be waiting for this to crack. How long does it usually take once you put, put the coffee beans in there? How long does it take? It takes about 10 minutes, depending on the roast. Sometimes they go longer, sometimes they go shorter. Um, and what we do, so we source coffee a little bit differently than Fifth Element does. So we source from all around the world. So we use this machine to get in samples, about a pound at a time, from harvest all around the world. And then we get to decide which ones we'd like to buy. And we deal with third-party importers. So it gives us more of the flexibility to experience coffees from different regions and also lets us, as a smaller roaster, bring in higher quality coffee than normally would be available to us. Sure. And Tony, you're taking notes here. Mm -hmm. what, are you, what are you noting? <laughs> uh, just time and temperature. We monitor these things so that we can repeat a roast that we feel is optimal in terms of flavor. So once we're done with this, we'll cup the coffee. It's a sensory evaluation tool, and we'll use that to make purchasing decisions. And if we like the way a sample roast turned out, we'll use that information going forward with a larger bag of coffee. And it takes about how long? Three minutes for us to hear this start cracking? Yes, yeah, so we're at about the eight minute mark right now. So okay. between okay. nine, 10 minutes, a couple of minutes, Here, you can just go it now. Okay, and then you lay it out for about five, how many days? Uh, well, what we do is jar, like, like uh, seal it in a, a jar that uh, won't let air out, or lets air out but won't let air in, one-way valve it's called, and we let it set up for like two, three days before we sample it. Sure. So, you can so it's it a process. Now. Yeah, it, gets it is excited. starting to crack, and it's changing colors as well. Yes. I don't know if you guys can see that. It looks really cool. Wow. And you also have Celsius. It's 211 Celsius, so yep. converting it also takes a while, yep. right? Yeah, so most roasters in the U.S. use Fahrenheit, or one of the sure. few that use Celsius. Um, so that is a little strange for us to communicate, but Danny uses Celsius because he's from El Salvador, so it's awesome. really nice for us to talk about the same roasting process. Great partnership. All right, thanks, guys. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Um, Thank in you. just a bit, we're also going to show Great you some more, some more machines that kind of look like uh, science experiments. All right, sensory evaluation tools. That's a lot of science right there, packed into two minutes. <laughs> Welcome back. It is 44 past the hour. About a third of the world's population drinks coffee in the morning. That's why just two days after National Coffee Day, there's now a new holiday introduced, International Coffee Day. <laughs> News 3 This Morning reporter Eden Checkle joins us live from Fifth Element Coffee in Madison. Good morning. Good morning, Adam and Charlotte. Now, Adam, I know how much you love coffee, so we are here today at Fifth Element Coffee Shop and here to tell us more about what goes into really making coffee is Todd Alba. Alba? You got it right. <laughs> All right, well, thanks for being here this morning. We appreciate it. So this is the Adam Special, right? Absolutely. It's the, everybody it loves Adam Special. Uh, we have uh, mocha. Uh, mocha, all of our chocolate comes from Gail Ambrosius Chocolate. It's a single origin uh, Colombian chocolate we use. Gail does a tremendous job. And this is a uh, latte here. So uh, Franco did the mocha, and uh, I believe that uh, Mikey, our barista, did the, uh, the latte this morning. So it takes a lot of uh, a really artistic uh, skill to get these designs in the coffee. So they taste good and look good. And you're saying, I mean, obviously a lot of us rely on coffee to stay awake, mm -hmm. but um, tell us about the flavors and really what, what we can experience. When sure. We so we have a direct relationship with our farmer in El Salvador, Raul Rivera from Finca Santa Rosa. So we don't have people that, uh, you know, buy our coffee in between. We have a direct relationship, much like Gray's downtown and a lot of the farm table restaurants in Madison. We have farm to cup coffee. So we know exactly from an environmental, from a uh, labor standpoint exactly how that coffee was prepared and raised and roasted it means a better taste in the cup ultimately uh, for our guests mm -hmm. so just don't drink it to stay awake exactly Enjoy everything that it has exactly to offer. so danny's going to start uh, preparing uh, oh. uh drinks over there but we can sure. talk you want to talk yeah, a little let's, bit let's show people what what he's doing right now real quick and then sure. we'll show you guys a cool machine yep so uh he's grinding the coffee there it's uh, ground goes on the espresso machine our espresso machine comes from uh simonelli this is one of this is actually a machine that was used on on the floor in the World Barista Championship. Yes, nice. that's actually a thing in Seattle this year. We bought it right off the floor. So this year's uh, World Barista Championship, Sasha from Australia used this machine. And it's one of 15 machines? One of 15 machines in the nice. world. And we have one right here in Madison. The only machine like this in Wisconsin, actually, on a bar right now. So Danny's pulling the espresso shot. Then he'll do the uh, foaming of the milk. And then he'll have what we uh, saw from Mikey and Franco earlier. Wow. 
Yeah. And actually, the bar here, uh, the wood of the bar is repurposed bowling alley wood from the old Wildcat Lanes, where Gary Canalti at once rolled a 300. So this is a gift to take back to oh. Gary. This is a piece of the old Verona la Wildcat Lanes bowling lane for Gary. I'm sure he'll treasure that. I'm sure he will. I'll, I'll say thank <laughs> but, you for him. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking uh, of the weather, and real quick, show yeah, us, tell us about this. This is our uh, Yama Cold Brewer from Taiwan. We do all of our cold brew in house. Uh, before we had Hattie McLean had the Doppler 3000. Ed Addison actually used this to forecast the weather in uh, Channel 3. No, not really. This is uh, our cold brew tower from Taiwan. We use only cold water uh, ice uh, for extraction. It goes down through the vessel. It makes the coffee really fruity and flavorful. Mm -hmm. My buddy from Monroe, uh, Kurt Kohler, actually a chemist, says by using ice sure. it seizes up the bitter aspects of the coffee leaves it very fruity all right well thank you so much todd we our pleasure thanks it. for being really here. learning a lot about coffee today so well it's our pleasure to host it. you all right well back to you guys and uh adam we're gonna bring your the adam special to you everybody you loves adam charlotte happy Lattie. birthday, Lattie. Charlotte happy loves birthday adam. thank you very much todd charlotte loves the mocha and you can tell that todd used to be in politics because he oh. remembers everybody's name uh -huh. and remembers <laughs> all the little details about everybody clearly yes clearly. so thank you eden thank you todd we appreciate it